Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This is a second video on the Nexion and the built-in double EEPROM. In the first one, which I'll leave a link to up here in the upper right if you haven't seen it, I go into some of the basics, but I wanted to go a little bit more in how the memory is laid out and how you have to be really careful when you write to the memory because as the user or the coder, you decide directly where that data is written. You pick the memory locations. You have 1,024 locations, but you can overwrite data if you don't pay attention. And I wanted to go into that a little bit more. This is the basic layout I have. Uh, it's similar to what I had in the last ones, except for I got rid of the slider. we will always be writing the number version or the, the number that's stored. And then down here will be the text. And whenever I read from it, I'll read both the text and the number, and I'll display them both. The one change that I did make is in this reset here. In the reset, all I'm doing is I'm writing 0 to 10 and 0 to, to location 14. And that's just set to clear the memory out of the spots 10 through 18. And then in the read, all I'm doing is reading from the memory, that REPO, and then placing the memory from spot number 10 into the number and into the text box. I'm going to open a spreadsheet now just to go a little bit more into how the memory is laid out. I'm going to refer back to this sheet as we go through the uh, exercises here. What I have is I have locations 10 through 20 here, but the memory actually goes from 0 all the way up to 1024, but we're going to focus on 10 through 20 and maybe a little beyond that depending upon what we write. And then um, the character 1, character 2, and character 3 equate to 31, 32, and 33 in hex, or 49, 50, and 51 in decimal. And the hex string, or the character string 1, 2, 3, and then a blank, is this value right here in decimal. And the string 1, 2, 3, 4, it'll equate to this number right here, this decimal number. So if we were to write either in string value this, or we were to write decimal this, like as in a integer value, we get the same thing. And this will make more sense as we go through it. But I just wanted to go over this because these are the values we're going to use. And we're going to write it to different locations in memory. And then we're going to read from the memory and you'll see how that all interacts. This write memory is set to write or to write different commands and store it into the memory. And we're going to start very simply here by just writing one and we're going to store it at location 10. We're just going to work through these commands in, in a various order, and I'll show you what, what happens as we do that. So if I run this in debug, so in debug mode, you can see that when I opened it, it read the memory, because that's what we have it set up to. But what I have set up is we're just going to write the string value of a number 1. And now we're going to read from the memory. And a 1 in decimal is 49, and then we put the 1 up there. Now it's important to know on this that when I hit the reset, I wrote all zeros in there, in both in 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way up through 18. So when we read the, the number value up here, it's reading four characters wide. In this case, they're all zeros except for the 1, so it worked out well. We got the 49, and we got this letter 1. So that's a pretty basic example. I'm going to close this. Now for the next step, we're going to leave this line in there. So what should happen is we'll overwrite the one with cheap controls. And then the value, this number up here, is going to be C-H-E-A. It's going to take the first four characters and equate it to a value. We're not going to take the time to calculate the value. You'll just see it's some really large number. And we got cheap controls, and we got this gigantic number. But it's important to remember this number is reading from the first location 10, because we're only reading that. So it's only reading this value right here, the first four, C H E A. If you were to look up the hex values for A, and if remember it goes backwards, so you'd put A E H C, it would equate to that number. I've done enough of this that I feel pretty confident that it would work. Now for this, now we're going to overwrite at like that location. 
we're going to write this large value and we're going to write it at 10. So we're going to overwrite the first four characters with this number. I'm going to go back to this. So we have in the value starting at 10, C H E A P. But we're going to take this right here and we're going to overwrite it. One, two, three, four. So we're going to put a one, a two, a three, and a four right there. And then we're going to read it back out. It should read out one, two, three, four, and then it should erase the C, H, E, and A, and then P space controls. We'll write the memory, and it should put one, two, three, and four here. And it does. And then this value is that value we wrote, that 87577-0417. And that's the value right there. But what if I take this out. If you remember, I said that writing 1, 2, 3, and 4 is the same as writing this number here. So now we're going to write 1, 2, and 3, 4. So we've already written cheap controls there. We wrote a 1. We overwrote it with cheap controls. Now we're going to overwrite cheap controls with 1, 2, 3, 4. So will we get 1, 2, 3, 4 just like we did up here and then the P and controls? Or what will happen? I'm going to run this in debug and we'll see. So this is from the old one, remember. This isn't this one. So we're going to write to memory, and we're going to read. And we lost the P space controls. But the value's the same, because it's just reading those four characters. Whenever you're writing text, anything in quotes, it adds a space at the end. So we had cheap controls in here, and then we wrote one, two, three, and four. But since it was in quotes, it put a space in here or a zero, not a space, but a zero. It is important to know the difference between space and zero because we have a space between cheap and controls. But space is an actual ASCII character, so it, it ends up being a value. For now, it would be, it's important to know that since we had, I'll go back to the code, since this is within quotes here, it added a space on the end. So when we went to read out the text value of it, it, uh, it, it, it stopped it at that space because it knows to read until it sees a zero, so it sees nothing, and then it stops reading the string in for the text. Knock that out, we're going to add in this. And this is the same as one, two, three. So we don't have the four on it. It's just like this up here, only it's one, two, three instead of one, two, three, four that this is going to write four character places. It's not going to write one, it's not going to write three character places. Every integer, whenever you write an integer, it takes up four. So we'll go ahead and see what happens with this one in debug. I'm going to write the memory. I'm going to read the memory. And in this case, it didn't just give us one, two, three, and then cheap controls or the rest of cheap controls out there. It truncated it. It cut it off. And that's because it was zero. It wrote one, two, three, and then a zero. And so when we read in the string value, it saw the zero and it stopped. The, the rest of the value is there. And if we were to read, if I go back into here now, and I leave this exactly like it is, but on the read, I change this to, for my text, to read 15 or 14, because it's, it's, the 1, 2, 3, and space are 10, 11, 12, and 13. So if I start reading at 14 instead, even though if you just saw we had the 1, 2, 3 was all we read, this time we'll get the rest of the cheap controls. So now if we read out the memory, we get P and controls. So it just wrote over the first four, but, but since it put a zero in there, it stopped reading the 1, 2, 3 at that zero. You'll find me saying space instead of zero. But this is a space right here, and it reads those just fine. I'm going to set this back to 10. And I'm going to deviate from the plan just a little bit. I'm going to put a space in here. And we'll comment out this, and we'll comment out that. And we'll debug just to find out what the value of a space is. So we write it, and then we read it, and it's a space. <laughs> And that's, oh, I should reset it first because I only wrote the space. This is an interesting case that just happened. Since I put the space in there and it added a blank after that, that took up two bytes. Well, this is going to read out four. And I still had the three and the, and the zero. So it, it took a space and then a zero. 
and then a three and then a zero again. So this is reading space zero three zero. And whatever that ASCII value is, is what this is. That's kind of interesting. If I hit reset, that just cleared it out. So now if I read memory, I get zero. But if I hit write again, it's going to write that space. And so a space is 32. Is the decimal equivalent of 32 would be a space. I don't know if you found that interesting, but I sure thought that was kind of neat. So let's go back and put this back. Now in this case, we're going to write 1, 2, 3, 4 at location 14 instead of 10. And by now you probably will know what will happen. It should write 1, 2, 3, 4 starting at space 14. And that's what we get. 1, 2, 3, 4 is written there. I'm going to show you one more thing down here. Look at this. And what we're going to do is we're going to write cheap at 10. And this should just, when I write it and read it, you'll just see cheap. And that stayed the exact same up there because we it's just looking at the first four. So now at 15, we're going to add a space and controls. So now we should get the full cheap controls. And we do. But what if we did just want cheap? And we wrote that in our characters, and it, we said, well, it's 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So there's cheap. And then I go, well, now I've got a piece of data I want to store. And let's say that data is, is a temperature like 98 degrees, just for. And we want to store that in our EEPROM2. So the next time we pull it up, we can populate a number box or something. So we know that this is only going to go to 14. It would be 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, yes. And so then we can store this one at 15. But remember, it adds a space onto the end of that. So it knows not to print anything beyond cheap. Because in this case, we just would want the display to print out cheap. And then we would want to use 98 somewhere else. We don't want that to appear there. But by putting that at 15, you get some weird results. You get B, because 98 probably equates to the letter B in ASCII. And because we got rid of the space, it went ahead and just added it to the end of the string. What you'd want to do is you'd want to add one more spot to this to make up for that space. Now when we run it, we'll get cheap, but we won't get the B. Now we just get the cheap because the B is stored in memory because we have the cheap, C-H-E-A-P, but then we have a space and the B is still stored here, but the string, when it goes to read it, it stops at that zero value or that inserted um, null or zero, however you want to think of it. And then you could put another variable down here. So when you go to organize a space, it's important because you can overwrite stuff and you can get some weird results. And if you were to put a whole bunch of data in here and it wasn't zero, um, it really wouldn't hurt anything because you'd just be reading, but it's just not a good idea. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.